Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Head Surgery Addicts. So today we will be discussing the thoracic radiograph, how you can interpret the thoracic radiograph in case of dog and cats. Okay, let us go to our lectures straightly without any formalities. So first before going to thoracic radiograph, I have skipped a small part that is the positioning otherwise the video will be too long remember while positioning it should be the x-ray should cover from the thoracic inlet up to the last tree okay and uh, you have to pull the uh, four limbs uh, cranially so that the scapula and the humerus do not come in the part of the x-ray okay so this is basically positioning which is not that much important because you see positioning is very easy in case of thoracic radiograph okay so i have directly gone to the topic before going to the actual interpretation of this uh, thoracic radiograph you should know a phenomenon known as atelectasis okay so this animal this x-ray actually is in right lateral recumbency this is the right side and this is the left side okay so actually this x-ray was supposed to be taken from vertical okay but to understand you to make you understand what is atelectasis and how it happens we have rotated the horizontal beam or we have made the beam horizontal so that you should know that how this is atelectasis happens okay this was this is the picture from thrall uh, radiology book okay see here this is the left long this is the left long and this is the right long see the extent of the right long okay right long this is up to the extension of the right long and this is the left long okay can you see how well aerated the left long is in comparison to the right long okay it is uh, the volume is comparatively less than the left long you can say this is atelectatic atelectic or you can say the longs is collapsed why because of three reasons first see the diaphragm this is the this is diaphragm the entire structure is diaphragm so this diaphragm puts pressure on this dependent long okay the long which is towards the table is known as the dependent long so this dependent part of the uh, this diaphragm you see here there is abdomen all the abdominal viscera will be towards the dependent side they will put pressure on the diaphragm and in turn diaphragm will put pressure on this the dependent long in this case the right long to collapse this is the first region second region the heart okay can you see the heart this is the heart actually the other one, the other part is not visible because it is has come in contact with the right long which is the atelectic, uh, atelectic. so this heart will put pressure on this right long further collapsing the right long third region see the chest wall the thoracic wall which is in touch with the table it has very less movement because it is in touch with the heart so, uh, so, uh, subject or heart table so these three main factors which contribute to the atelectasis of the dependent lung in this case the right lung due to this phenomenon the opacity of this right lung increases okay imagine if both the lungs will be equally irritated the picture imagine the picture now one lung is atelectic which is basically collapsed increasing the radio opacity and this one is normal imagine the picture okay so overall opacity will be increased many a times what happens that due to the increase in opacity special in case of anesthetized patients or sedated patient this phenomenon is more okay they that may be misdiagnosed or misinterpreted as some long lesion or you can say it may be represented or interpreted as pneumonia but it is not pneumonia simply the dependent long is atelectasis this is why you should be very careful while interpreting the thoracic radiograph okay so basically if you are evaluating a radiograph that is right lateral recumbency you are basically evaluating the left lung okay this i want to highlight okay so if you want to uh, evaluate the right lung then you have to take the left lateral recumbency okay you understood the phenomenon of atelectasis okay the atelectasis not only happens in the lateral radiograph it happens uh, in extensively in lateral radiographs but also it happens in the dorsal ventral and ventral dorsal uh, radiograph 
but in case of dorsoventral this is dorsoventral this is dorsal side this is ventral side we have rotated the beam to take horizontal beams okay in dorsoventral only the ventral most part may be some atal axis this view in this view the longs are minimally atelectic in case of ventral dorsal this is vd view this is ventral side this is dorsal side you can see the caudal lobe this is caudal lobe which is atelectic okay this is the caudal lobe of long which is atelectic okay so you have to keep in mind the phenomenon of atelectasis when you are interpreting the thoracic radiogram okay now we will go to the our thoracic radiogram this is lateral radiograph this one is right lateral sorry this one is right lateral and this one is left lateral okay i have a homework for you or you can say while watching i will tell the differences between the right lateral and left lateral how to differentiate them you have to take note of them and do comment in the comment box that uh, how much you have grasped okay so first we'll see the longs in case of right lateral radiograph the right long is atelectic so you are basically evaluating the left long so here is the long for you this is whole so this is the longs okay the left long is basically divided into two parts okay like this this is the cranial lobe this is the caudal lobe cranial lobe is again divided or you can say by a septum it is divided into the cranio cranial and the cranio caudal okay this is caudal lobe these two are basically the part of cranial lobe okay so cranio cranial cranio caudal this is caudal okay i am not discussing the long lesions here you, you are simply discussing the what you can find in normal radiogram when i will go to the different system and their pathologies i will tell about the uh, long patterns okay and the, what are bronchial pattern what is alveolar pattern interstitial pattern there are many more so in case of left lateral the left long is atelectic so you are basically evaluating the right long see this is total right long right long is basically have four lobes okay but in this particular you can identify or you can evaluate three lobes first one is the cranial lobe this is cranial lobe this is the intermediate or you can say middle lobe this is caudal lobe there is another one which is basically the accessory lobe this is the area of accessory lobe which lies medial to this intermediate or middle lobe okay so you cannot evaluate in this radiograph it is better evaluated in ventrodorsal view i will discuss the dorsoventral and ventrodorsal also so basically you are evaluating the cranial lobe middle lobe and the caudal lobe see there isn't any differentiation mark that from this is cranial this is intermediate because longs is very flexible organ when it is well aerated it can go beyond uh, uh, you can say that it is fully expanded when it has some lesions or some problems it may not be that expanded so it is very difficult to say from which rib to which rib this is cranial from which to which to it is middle nothing like that you can have some imaginary light where the bronchus separated and uh, you see this is i will discuss about trachea like the, here this is region of carina okay so here you can differentiate different lobes okay this is cranial this is intermediate this is caudal and here there will be accessory which is medial to the intermediate lobe so this is basically longs the pathologies i will discuss in different class okay you see here you can see it is well aerated some structures are there okay these are not long lesions those are some blood vessels we will discuss also okay so this is longs for you next we will discuss the trachea see here this is trachea coming trachea this is trachea okay here will be tracheal bifurcation this region is known as the carina region this is carina region here you see this is left in left trachea this is okay this is the trachea this is the bifurcation region is known as carina c a r i n a carina one thing you have to remember trachea usually deviate away from the spine this is spine okay it deviates away from the spine usually the angle is 10 to 15 degree 10 to 15 degree angle another thing you have to remember the tracheal diameter to thoracic inlet ratio okay this is measured to know whether the trachea is stenotic or not okay so you have to measure 
two lengths. First, the tracheal length. Let me erase this one for you. So you have to measure first the tracheal diameter. This is tracheal diameter. Now you have to measure the thoracic inlet. The ventral most part of first thoracic vertebrae to the cranial most part of the sternum, which is basically known as manubrium. Okay, so you have to measure this one. Measure this one. You have to take a ratio, whatever. This may be two mm. This is maybe ten mm. You have to take a ratio, and you have to find in percentage. Okay. So in case of non-brachycephalic, non-brachycephalic breeds, it should be the ratio should be twenty plus minus three percent. Okay. So in case of brachycephalic. In case of brachycephalic, it is 16 plus minus 3 percent. But in case of bulldogs, okay, it may go as low as 13 plus minus 4 percent. Okay, in case of bulldog, they have very highly stenotic trachea. Okay, so you know you should remember this percentage while uh, uh, taking into account the measurements of a trachea. So this is trachea for you. Next we will go for the thoracic wall. Okay. The way I am going, you can note down after which I am going which things. And uh, in case of interpreting while the thoracic radiograph, you can comment like that. Okay. Next is thoracic wall. In lateral radiographs, you can evaluate the thoracic spines. Okay. This is T1, T2, T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 
dorsa ventral and the lateral okay because they are very much confusing this is mediastinum for you next we will go for the diaphragm okay mediastinum has two deflections okay i forgot the cranio ventral reflection or deflection whatever you can take and the cordo ventral deflection okay what is that let me show you this one if i will take a slice here okay one slice and i will rotate it and i will show it to you how it will be here will be the vertebrae this will be sternum the two the sternum uh, sorry ribs i am sorry this ribs and here will be sternum ideally how you imagine mediastinum it should be in middle okay here will be one lung here will be another lung this middle part is mediastinum okay and here will be some structure like a cranial vena cava the trachea like that structures will be present in the mediastinum but actually in this part it does not appear like that okay the right lung is actually more in mass compared to the left lung okay so what will happen this right lung will appear like this okay and the left lung will be like a, that the dorsal part of mediastinum if you will divide into is in the middle but the ventral part is actually deviated towards the left side okay so this deflection is known as the here it is cranio ventral deflection and or reflection whatever you can say and here in this part also where the accessory lobe of the right lung will be there it will be further it will be further towards the left side here in this part the deflection is known as the cordo ventral deflection that is another one also the vena cava deflection or vena cava deflection but uh, that is not visible radiographically okay we will see in the dorsal ventral how deflection is looks like okay, this is about the mediastinum next we will go for the <laughs> diaphragm in radiographical view diaphragm you will find three structures first one is crura crura next the intercrural cleft i am writing in short form it is not icc actually intercrural cleft and the cupula okay so in diaphragm there is a difference between the left and the, the left lateral and the right lateral note this point so you see the dependent part will be cranial dependent crura will be cranial and the independent or which is towards the x ray beam will be the coda so here you see this is a crura this is sorry this is another crura this is intercrural cleft and here is the cupula okay so the dependent one will be cranial this is right lateral so the right crura will be cranial this is right crura this is left crura one thing this is caudal vena cava here you can see caudal vena cava this caudal vena cava actually meets with the right crura or you can say it is towards the right side that is why it meets with the right crura and towards the left crura you see this is stomach okay stomach you will find nearer to the left crura now let us go to the left lateral see here this is the dependent side will be left left crura this is left crura which is cranial this is right crura which is caudal this is right crura this is intercrural cleft and uh, this is cupula okay now i told you towards the uh, to left crura attaches or you can say find near that will be stomach can you see the stomach okay this is how you can identify the crurals okay and remember the caudal vena cava i told you it will attach or you can say it will confluent with the right crura c it crosses the left crura then attaches to the right crura this is the difference between the left lateral and the right lateral okay here you can see the vena cava caudal vena directly attaches to right crura here it got crosses the left crura or you can say one crura then attaches to the other okay another difference you can see this cruras are more parallel in case of right lateral while they diverge away in case of left lateral by this you can tell whether this is radiograph is a left lateral radiograph or the right lateral radiograph so this is diaphragm okay this is basically diaphragm which you can find in lateral radiographs we will also discuss in dorsoventral also next one of the most important structure that is heart 
okay so the heart first you should know the shape of heart okay the shape is more round you can see here it is more round in case of left lateral by which you can differentiate and also you can see it is slightly elevated from the uh, sternum can you see this is the gap okay but here in right lateral it is purely attaches to the sternum okay there is very very less gap or you may not find any gap okay so in case of left lateral the heart appears more round and it seems to be elevated from the sternum this is also a differentiating factor in differentiating the left and the right lateral radiographs okay so heart next we will understand the vertebral heart score here we will understand or you can understand here vertebral heart score this score is given for the relative heart size okay so what you have to do in vertebral heart score you have to draw two lines first line this is carina okay you have to draw from carina to the apex of the heart to the most extreme point okay this line you have drawn whatever maybe 5 mm 10 mm whatever it is another line you have to draw at the thick, thickest part or you can say in some articles or some books you find the junction between the atrium and the ventricle it is very difficult to identify to which the atrium is there to which the ventricle is there but you can simply take another line which should be perpendicular to this line and at the heart's thickest point or you can say towards the base okay so here i will draw another line okay this this should be perpendicular to each other now these two lines will be reflected in the t4 from t4 reflected on the thoracic spine this is t1 t2 t3 t4 okay so first line you will reflect it like that now count the vertebrae 1 2 3 4 okay sometimes it may be 4.2 4.3 4.5 like that you see 0.1 0.2 all right if there is some difference okay many many times it is done i estimation okay so counted four now reflect this line the uh, horizontal line this vertical you can say vertical line horizontal line or first line second line whatever you do that and reflect it from t4 okay suppose 1 2 3 this is 3.2 total came 7.2 okay this is just for imagination okay this is not exact calculation in your computer when you will be reading this radiographs you can do it in much easier way much accurate way okay so it came to 7.2 so vertebral heart score in case of dog is 8.1 minute 8.7 to 10.7 okay sometimes i forget the values i am not good with numbers 8.7 to 10.7 but remember in case of brachycephalic bits where the heart is relatively large to compare to the thoracic cavity in case of brachycephalic bit may go up to 12.5 which is basically normal okay so in case of vhs in case of cat you can also measure in case of cat you, the value is 6. i think 6.7 to 8.1 okay this is the value for cat i am not at all good with numbers okay so these are reference values which you can note down and uh, while doing the thoracic radiography interpretation do comment regarding the vhs vertebral heart score another thing about heart you can measure vlas vlas vertebral left atrial score why this is uh, measured you see uh, for evaluation of heart and other things related structures related to heart it is better you go for the echocardiography but many of the institution many of the clinics do not have a ultrasound machine which has if they have they may not have the echocardiography probe and the echocardiography table like that so they are more really dependent on the radiography so to measure that the heart problems you can go for radiography but it should be advisable even the, the books it is written that you should always go for echocardiography for a evaluation of heart but if you do not have thoracic radiogram so this is vls vertebral left atrial score why this is important you can measure this score to know the M, mostly mmbd mitral sorry myxomatous mitral valve valve disease mmbd okay so what you have to do you have to point out two points first the carina you know that this is the carina point 
another point let me do it here it is much more clear actually this is carina okay ventral most part of carina and you have to identify another point where the dorsal border this is caudal vena cava this is the dorsal border this is ventral border the dorsal border meets the heart or you can say atria this is another point two points you have to measure two points okay draw a line joining these two points and whatever 3 mm 4 mm whatever or 3 cm 4 cm whatever it comes similarly similar to vhs measure it from t4 this is t1 t2 t3 t4 okay measure it from t4 it came like 2.2 okay so for a normal animal it should be less than 2.3 the vl vertebral left atrial score vlas it should be less than 2.3 if it is ranges from 2.5 to 2.8 more chance that the animal is suffering from mmvd myxomatous mitral valve disease okay so this is heart this are structures related to heart another thing you should remember the chambers okay chambers this is left atrium this is left ventricle right ventricle here it is right auricle not right ventricle okay this region is basically right auricle these are the chambers if you find some enlargement here enlargement there you can guess that which chamber is enlarged okay so this is heart uh some other things are there which we will be discussing we will be discussing in the ventral dorsal views or dorsal ventral views next thing we will be evaluating the pulmonary vessels okay the pulmonary pulmonary vessels okay the so pulmonary vessels are two vessels or you can say based on uh, towards which they are migrating the cranial vessels which moves to the cranium and the caudal vessels the caudal pulmonary vessels will be evaluated in the dorsal ventral view next we will be going to the dorsal ventral dorsal ventral view and the cranial vessels are be evaluated in the lateral view cranial vessels based on side it can be left cranial vessels or right cranial vessels basically we are evaluating we generally evaluate the right cranial vessels why because they traverse ventrally which are easy to identify based on the lungs which provides the background while the left which are basically more dorsal and cranial okay dorsal and like this they will be traveling here can you see two vessels these are basically pulmonary vessels okay we will discuss that okay so the left are basically not evaluated the right vessels are basically evaluated so can you tell that uh, in which lateral radiograph we will be measuring the right pulmonary vessels or we can appreciate the right pulmonary vessels it is left lateral because the left lung will be atelectic and we will be evaluating the right lung there we will find the right cranial vessels or right cranial pulmonary vessels let us go to the radiograph this is left lateral radiograph here can you see these two vessels one here and one here let me erase it so that you can appreciate can you see these two vessels okay so the dorsal one is artery the ventral one is vein okay this is artery this is vein there are some other vessels right here can you see these vessels these are basically cranial vessels cranial uh, sorry the right left cranial pulmonary vessels they are standardly not evaluated standardly you will evaluate the right uh, pulmonary vessels this is artery this is vein dorsal ventral ventral for vein okay so if you will measure the size of artery and vein they should be equal okay if you are finding the artery is dilated it may be a case of pulmonary hypertension if the vein is dilated that may be some cardiac insufficiency okay so that it is not going to the heart properly or heart is not pumping properly like that so well, this is the importance of cranial vessels also if they are very good in shape then you can say that the pulmonary circulation is good okay this is the importance of pulmonary vessels next we will evaluate the caudal vena cava see here this is caudal vena cava this is caudal vena here in the left lateral the caudal vena cava it will cross the one cross and meet with the right one this is left this is right so in case of caudal vena cava the diameter of the caudal vena cava it should be it should not be more than or you can say it, it should be equal or less than t5 sorry 
d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 this is 6 okay it should be nearly equal to or less than t5 or t6 okay whether you can measure t5 or t6 the length of the body okay this is the length of the body it should not be more than this if it is more than this then may assume that there is central venous pressure increase book says it is not accurate but it can give you some idea another formula also this diameter is should not be 1.5 times of the diameter of the descending aorta this is descending aorta okay this is the diameter of descending aorta it should not be the diameter of caudal venous should not be 1.5 times more than the diameter of the abdominal uh, sorry i always pronounce wrong descending aorta okay so this is this is all about the lateral views okay whatever i have discussed these are basically lateral views let us go to dorso ventral view dorso ventral and ventral dorsal okay can you tell which one is which okay we'll discuss also this is also a homework for you this is ventral dorsal this is dorsal ventral let us start with lungs like in the lateral one we'll go there so here this is lungs this is another lungs okay sorry this is the right lung this is left lung okay it is uh, in case of ventral dorsal they go up to the diaphragm but in case of dorsal ventral they go beyond the diaphragm like that okay this is you see up to here this is right lung this is left lung let us discuss the lobes right and the left lung has only two lobes that is cranial and the caudal the cranial lobe can be divided into two by a septum the cranio cranial cranial cord cranial cord okay and here this is cranial lobe middle lobe this is caudal lobe here you will find the accessory lobe this is accessory lobe it can be evaluated in ventral dorsal not in dorsal ventral why you see longer expanded up to here and here is the diaphragm the opacity of the diaphragm hinders the performance or hinders the lesions of these particular lobes okay especially the accessory lobe which will be here that is why it is better evaluated in ventral dorsal not in dorsal ventral okay so in dorsal ventral this is right lung cranial medial caudal this is the accessory and here this is cranial and caudal which can be divided cranial lobe can be divided into cranio cranial and the cranio caudal this is lungs for you okay we will discuss the lesions when we will discuss the pathology next we will go for the trachea in this radiograph you may not appreciate the trachea let me show you another radiograph for trachea this radiograph here you can identify the trachea more there is also visible but we are sitting uh, shooting in the mobile okay so we may not appreciate so here this is here you can say the trachea can you see the trachea i am drawing like that and try to comprehend can you see the trachea now let me erase this one can you appreciate this is trachea like this that is going okay this is trachea okay trachea will bifurcate here and it will give some bronchus this is towards the cranial lobe the so left cranial this is towards the left caudal this is going to the left cran uh, right cranial right caudal right intermediate is not that much of visible okay so this is basically bronchus and its separation important point is here this is the region where the mediastinal lymph node exists okay it is not visible radiographically but here is the region for mediastinum we will also discuss the mediastinum here see the trachea let me draw it for you so that you can see can you see the trachea like that okay here okay this is trachea 
ओके ट्रैकिया दिस इज बेसिकली ट्रैकिया नेक्स्ट विल गो फॉर दोरासिक वॉल the thoracic wall here i already told about thoracic wall here you can actually uh, measure or you can appreciate the these extra thoracic musculatures okay if any some problem is there some uh, uh, discontinuity in there you can identify it here okay this is not so serious thing but uh, sometimes you may find cases of uh, pneumothorax flea chest okay so that case the dorsal ventral or ventral dorsal can be very helpful rather than the lateral views okay we will discuss the pathologies also when we will discuss the pathology of thoracic wall next the mediastinum i told you regarding the deflections let us identify here see this is mediastinum this is mediastinum let me show you another video see here because here some important structures are there which is available see this is mediastinum okay, the middle part should be mediastinum but can you see this thing slightly deflected away okay this is craniovental deflection or craniovental reflection of this mediastinum okay another can you see a line here this line many times this uh, is misinterpreted as phreno cardiac ligament but it is not phreno cardiac cardiac ligament uh, ligament i'm sorry pronunciations so this is basically the cordoventral deflection of a reflection of the mediastinum okay let me show you another radiograph where it is very clearly visible see here can you see the craniovental reflection here and here you can see very nice deflection or reflection whatever in book it is written reflection okay the reflection of this mediastinum okay now i told you you will find thymus why this reflection is important because in this reflection in young animals you will find thymus here you can find thymus actually it is cell shaped you know selling boat where it will be like this okay it is cell shaped this is thymus thymus you will find in craniovental reflection usually you will find cranial and left to the base of heart this is apex this is base you will find cranial and left to the heart this is thymus okay that i wanted to highlight in thymus is usually visible in ventral dorsal but it can also be visible in dorsal ventral okay this is mediastinum for you okay this is cranial mediastinum medial then caudal mediastinum okay i just wanted to highlight the reflections okay next diaphragm see here in the diaphragm you may find three domes this one dome another dome this is dome this is vd view okay in vd view you will find two domes or three domes okay so this is left crura this is right crura this is cupula in case of dorsal ventral you find a single dome you may find some uh, other domes two domes based on positioning of the beams but mostly you will find single dome which is basically cupula okay after diaphragm let us go to heart so heart appears more round in case of dorsal ventral and it is positioned more towards left side okay compared to the ventral dorsal in ventral dorsal it more less central okay and it appears at its a base and apex but here it appears more round can you tell me why this appears more round in dorsal ventral let me show you you see this is you can say ratta in hindi you will simply remember the why it uh, it looks round in dorsal ventral but should know why it appears round here you see this is dorsal ventral where the beam is instead of vertical is horizontal you see the abdominal organs will push the heart to become it to make it more upright when the heart will be more upright it will appear round in case of dorsal ventral okay this is the concept 
when you understand concept you will never fail okay if you are doing ratta or you are mugging up these things you may not remember things and you may get confused okay so this is heart regarding heart you should know the analogy okay where where things are present suppose you will find a bulge here here so what this could be if you are finding bulge here what this could be okay so you will see some analogy see this analogy so this is heart okay this is the craniometral deflection or reflection of the mediastinum see this okay if you are finding a bulge from 930 position to 1130 position you may tell that it may be affected or the right atrium may be affected or it is bulge coming out from the right atrium from the position of 1130 to 1230 this one this position is for aa that is aortic arch this is aortic arch if you are find a bulge in this position in this position you are finding a bulge then it may be the bulging of aortic arch if you are finding from position 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock okay this is pulmonary artery see this here if you are finding a bulge here then it may be the pulmonary artery bulge next if you are finding from 2 to 3 o'clock position this is left auricle this position is left auricle if you are finding a bulge or you can say bulge shaped structure in the center of the heart or slightly ventral then it is a bulging of left atrium okay so these are the chambers which you need to keep in mind while interpreting the thoracic radiograph let us go back to our radiograph this is all about heart next we'll do the pulmonary vessels i told you we in the lateral radiograph we evaluated the cranial um, vessels cranial pulmonary vessel in the dorsoventral view especially dorsoventral the ventral dorsal the vessels are not visible that much so in dorsoventral view we'll evaluate the caudal vessels caudal pulmonary vessels okay can you see two vessels see here one this black dot is bronchus actually can you see this vessel this is one vessel this is another vessel let me erase this one for you then you can appreciate okay this is one vessel this is another vessel here also you will find one vessels okay the lateral one is artery the medial one is the vein okay this is caudal artery caudal pulmonary artery caudal pulmonary vein okay this is right side okay right right caudal pulmonary artery and a vein usually right side is evaluated okay not the left side because the left vessels are not that much consistent in finding the finding in dorsoventral okay so you have to measure the diameter so that you can say that whether this is normal or not let me show you another enlarged view can you see here see this vessel here thinning out okay this vessel here and another vessel here okay here also you can find one vessel here another vessel coming from here okay the lateral one is artery the medial one is vein okay artery and vein usually the pulmonary artery is evaluated especially on the right side at the level of ninth rib okay so the vessel this vessel will form a shadow with the ninth rib if it is square then it is oval and go if the long axis is perpendicular to the spine then it is enlarged if the long axis is parallel to the spine then it is constricted okay this is basically evaluating the pulmonary vessels you may not find pulmonary vessel in all dorsoventral views so you don't need to worry you should know that there is some structure which can be visible in dorsoventral view all the structure you may not find in consistent with all, all the radiographs but you should know the concepts okay the which things you can visualize so this is basically the pulmonary 
vessels. Caudal vena cava, last one. It may not be visible, but you may find in some radiograph. Sorry. Here, can you see a structure? This is basically caudal vena cava. Here. Okay, this is caudal vena cava. You may not find in all uh, dorsal ventral or ventral dorsal view. Don't need to worry. This is basically caudal vena cava. Okay, so we have discussed all those things regarding the thoracic radiograph which you can interpret okay so your homework you know that how to differentiate the left lateral radiograph from the right lateral radiograph based on the radiographic evidence and also from the dorsal ventral and the ventral dorsal okay so note down those points which i told during this lecture and do comment down below so this is all about interpreting the thoracic radiograph we have covered the abdominal radiograph normal one thoracic radiograph normal one we have covered now we will go for the pathologies okay system wise from abdominal radiograph we will start from git like that urinary system like that all the systems we will be covering also in thoracic radiograph all the system will be covering okay so this is all about today we will meet in the next class till then tata bye bye take care